Hey my friends, welcome back to another episode of Rebuild Reality. So we're going to talk about something that's really going to be super cool today. So you're definitely going to want to stick around for this whole thing because as I go along, it's it just gets better and better. So it's, this video has quite an intriguing title and I do understand, I do realize that obviously I wrote it, but this is exactly what we're talking about. And at first I was like, who you really are. And I'm like, no, it's what. It is what you really are and how to travel interdimensionally. Because you didn't think that that was a thing or maybe just a science fiction thing. No, this is a reality. And I actually know somebody who does this. And it is a technique that was taught a very, very long time ago. And it's only because he has an extremely expanded awareness that uh, he remembers his past lives, like all of them, all of them. And that's why he remembers this technique, which you will not find um, anywhere. I don't think you will find it. I don't think it exists anymore. So anyway, it is true. We can absolutely travel interdimensionally. And it is when you do, it is just as real as this. It's just as real as this is because when you're in another reality it becomes it, it will appear just as real in fact they will appear more real than your 3d because we're in a very very limited perspective here but you're here your focus is here so your focus is able to go other places too so we're going to go ahead and i wanted to talk about and share this article with you because it's so cool and you guys are like I said you're gonna love it so let's get right into it so the article is entitled does matter exist or is it all just an illusion so this was uh, an article from a magazine called shift so it begins and it says concerning matter of course we know this quote from uh, Einstein concerning matter we have all been wrong what we have called matter is energy whose vibration has been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. There is no matter. Albert Einstein. Yes, this is a quite a bold statement. If true, that would certainly demand some sort of evidence or mathematical proof to back it up. It may seem like a paradox that the things which we can see and touch are non-existent. However, there is an answer to this, which may be found in the bold and exciting excitingly new science of, of course, quantum physics. In ages past, it was believed that what we can see and touch, like a rock, for instance, was the elements, in other words, matter. However, as science developed, such as chemistry, and much more recently, quantum physics, it has been observed that matter seems to exist on one hand, but once we take a deep look into the heart of the matter, no pun intended, there seems to be as if there was nothing. In atoms, you have mostly protons, neutrons, and electrons. However, electrons, for example, are insignificantly microscopic and spread out over enormous distances. In between them, there is what is perceived as empty space, what we would view that. In fact, 99.99999% of an atom is this so-called empty space. Even if we look into electrons and protons, etc., we see that there is yet again more open, empty space. Gluon, gluon, gluons, 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 I hope I'm saying that right. Gluons, <laughs> neutrinos, and the like are also in there somewhere, but no matter how far we look into these particles, there is not anything that we can even say, that we can even quantify as to being a building block of all of this. What's more, electrons literally possess no dimension. An electron is simply not an object as we know it. There is nothing. However, our eyes and observations are fooling us because indeed this nothing is something that we cannot quantifiably say it is something though. And therefore, it is nothing because we can't explain what it is. So there has to exist an energy that holds all these particles together, sort of like a glue, or else matter would not exist because it would be akin to having a rock turn into sand, the sand that can no longer stay together 
as a rock anymore. There have been notable quantum physicists, physicists such as Dr. Fred Allen Wolf, that have been looking to science with spirituality. See, like we've always been talking about the two combined. That's where they meet. It's not one or the other. It's it's both, and with relative success. Below is what an is from an article attributed to Dr. Wolf concerning his perception of this most interesting issue at hand. Quantum physics has thus brought about a radical new understanding both of the particles and the void. In subatomic particles, in subatomic physics, matter is no longer seen as a material substance, but is recognized as a form of energy. When a piece of seemingly solid matter, a rock or a human, hand or a limb of a tree is placed under a powerful microscope. The electron scanning microscope with the power to magnify several thousand times takes us down into a realm that has the look of the sea about it. This is so cool, this part. In the kingdom of corpuscles, there is transfiguration and there is samsara, the endless round of birth and death. Every passing second, some two and a half million red cells are born. And every second, the same number die. The typical cell lives about 110 days, then becomes tired and decrepit. There are no lingering deaths here. For when a cell loses its vital force, it somehow attracts the attention of macrophage. I think I'm saying that right. As the, mag as, the magnif as the magnification increases, the flesh does begin to dissolve. Muscle fiber now takes on a fully crystalline aspect. We can see that it is made of long spiral molecules in orderly array. And all of these molecules are swaying like wheat in the wind, connected with one another and held in place by invisible waves that pulse many trillions of times a second. What are the molecules made of? As we move closer, we see atoms, the tiny shadowy balls dancing around their fixed locations in the molecules, sometimes changing positions with their partners in perfect rhythm. And now we focus on just one of the atoms. Its interior is lightly veiled by a cloud of electrons. We, came, we come even closer, increasing the magnification. The shell dissolves, and we look on the inside to find nothing. Somewhere within that emptiness we know is a nucleus. We scan the space, and there it is, a tiny dot. At last, we have discovered something hard and solid, a reference point. But no. As we move closer to the nucleus, it too begins to dissolve. It too is nothing more than an oscillating field. Waves of rhythm inside the nucleus are other organized fields, protons, neutrons, even smaller particles. Each of these, upon our approach, also dissolve into pure rhythm. These days, the scientists are looking for quarks, strange subatomic entities having qualities which they describe with such words as upness, downness, charm, strangeness, truth, beauty, color, and flavor. But no matter, if we could get close enough to these wondrous quarks, they too would melt away. They too would have to give up all pretense of any solidity whatsoever. Even their speed and relationship would be unclear, leaving them only relationship and pattern of vibration. Of what is the body made? It is made of emptiness and rhythm. At the ultimate heart of the body, at the heart of the world, there is no solid matter whatsoever. Once again, there is only the dance, the unimaginable heart of the atom, the compact nucleus, we have found no solid object, but rather a dynamic pattern of tightly confined energy, vibrating perhaps 1,022 times a second. A dance. The protons, the positively charged knots in the pattern of the nucleus, 
are not only powerful, they are very, very old. Along with the much lighter electrons that spin and vibrate around the outer regions of the atom, the protons constitute the most ancient entities of matter, perceived matter, in the entire universe. Going back to the first seconds of the birth of time and space, it follows then that the world of subatomic particles, there are no objects, only processes taking place. Atoms consist of particles, and these particles are not made of any solid matter whatsoever. When we observe them under a microscope, we never see any substance. We rather observe dynamic patterns continually changing into one another, a continuous dance of energy. This dance of energy, the underlying rhythm of the universe, is again more intellated than seen. All right, more intuited than seen. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Cornfield, a contemporary teacher of meditation, finds a parallel between the behavior of subatomic particles and meditation states. When the mind becomes very silent, you can clearly see that all that exists in the world of brief moments of consciousness arising together with the six sense objects. There is only sight and the knowing of sight, sound and the knowing of sound, smell, taste and the knowing of them. Thoughts and the knowing of thoughts. If you can make the mind very focused as you can in meditation, you see that the whole world breaks down into these small events of sight and knowing. These thoughts and knowing. No longer are these houses, cars, bodies, or even oneself. All you see are particles of consciousness as an experience. Yet you can go deeper in meditation in another way and the mind becomes very still very still and you will see yet differently that consciousness is like waves like a sea like an ocean now it is not particles but instead every sight and every sound is contained in this ocean of consciousness from this perspective there is no sense of particles at all if truly being the words of dr wolf i believe this explanation of this fascinating reality is a beautiful description of the issue at hand so now, so sorry, so how is it that we exist as matter? Albert Einstein alluded to this answer. We, the people of this beautiful planet, are really beings made of energy, but we exist at the third dimension because our atoms have a specific frequency which makes us able to exist in this third dimension. This specific frequency is stable enough for all our lifetimes. Using this information, if we are indeed capable of accelerating and decelerating, speeding up and slowing down the frequencies we have that, we make, that make us able to exist in the third dimension, if we can take that frequency and make it go up or down through our states of being, through our emotional states, right? Then naturally, we can use this in order to travel interdimensionally throughout the infinite multiverse and here lies the key to the true evolution of the human race once we learn or progress far enough to accelerate and decelerate the vibrational frequency of our atoms within us then in theory and actually in fact we will be able to exist in the fifth dimension and in parallel universes of this wonderful multiverse. Legendary physicist Max Planck, who you know I love, is attributed to saying in a lecture that was given in Florence the following, as a physicist, that is a man who has devoted his whole life to a holy prosaic science, the exploration of matter, no one would surely suspect me of being a fantasist. And so, having studied the atom, I am telling you that there is no matter as such. All matter arises and persists only due to a force that causes the atomic particles to vibrate, holding them together in the tiniest of solar systems. Yet in the whole of the universe, there is no force that is either intelligent or eternal. And we must therefore assume that 
behind this force, there is a consciousness, an intelligent mind or spirit. This is the very origin of all matter, which is why consciousness creates matter, which is why we can move matter with our minds, which is why we can, you can redesign your body, you can redesign the world, you can redesign anything with your consciousness, with your mind, with your conscious awareness, what you focus on, what you think about, what you imagine into being. This is how it works. This is why it works. And that's what you are. That's what you really are. That's who and what you are. And the reason that it is absolutely possible for us to travel interdimensionally. <clears throat> So I was wondering about this before. That's the end of the article, by the way. I was wondering about this before, why it is that even though our bodies, we know that they renew ourselves, you know, why do we keep certain patterns? Why, if my cells have all completely renewed themselves or completely different cells, why do I have the same scars? Why do I have the same physical issues? Why would I have the same emotional issues or what have you? Well, it's because it's a pattern. It's just a pattern that just like how all things break down, they become a pattern within us. And that's why through affirmations, through repetition, we simply just change the pattern because anything negative in our life that's going on, any negative belief or experience, it's just a pattern and patterns like all patterns can be changed. You know, just like when, like I was saying before, when we go to the gym, we change pattern. When we learn how to drive, we've changed a pattern. Where at first it's like, oh, you go through that part, that, that you know, that time frame of a couple of weeks or so where you're like, I don't know how to steer this thing. And it's really like, it's, it's, a, it's more of your conscious mind is trying to do it. But then it becomes a subconscious program. And then you got it and you do it. And it just becomes a part of your reality because you don't have to, you're not trying to, how do I do this? You know, just like when we are trying to, when our mind is like, oh yeah, I've done this before. It's not a problem. But if it's something new, like I've got to write a report, I have to think, I have to figure it out. I have to do something I haven't done before, or I have to do it on something I haven't done before. Then there's all that resistance because we're like learning something new. It's exactly the same when we want to change our reality. At first it's like, you're like, the mind's like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to focus on it. I don't want to take the time. Oh my God, it's not working. It wants you to give up. It wants you to give up. Trust me, it wants you to give up because it's going to whine like a little two-year-old the whole time until you get to about, you know, two, maybe three weeks into it. And, uh, and then it's going to finally give it up. It's going to finally give in. It will finally give in to what you are saying is your reality. That's how it works. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that today. Uh, I know I really enjoyed uh, reading that article about how things break down. It's another beautiful viewpoint of how all of this fits together. And the more information, the more solid scientific facts you have that yes, this is not real. And it is absolutely changeable. There's nothing that cannot be changed. The better you feel, the more sure of yourself that you are, that this does indeed work. So thank you for being here with me once again on Rebuild Reality. It's nice to spend more time with you guys. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't already, I hope you will consider it. And thank you for liking, for commenting, Mwah! for sharing. All of those things. And I'm going to see all of you. <laughs> all of you right now. <laughs> I'm going to see you guys here next time on Rebuild Reality.